Welcome to this week's episode of The Gavel. I am Benny Ark. Amazed allegations of budget pardon, Senator Abdul Ningi from Bauchi Central Senatorial District clarified his remarks, stating his willingness to face consequences, including possible suspension from the Senate. The chairman of the Northern Senators Forum distanced the forum from his comments, emphasizing they were his personal views and not representative of the forum's position while also denying bias against President Bola Tinubu or the North. Here is the report. On Monday, against the backdrop of claims of budget padding, Senator Abdul Ningi, who represents Bochi Central Senatorial District, had said he was quoted out of context and was prepared to carry his cross, even if it translates to suspension from the Red Chamber. The chairman of the Northern Senators Forum, who clarified he was speaking in a personal capacity as a senator and not the forum, said he never suggested that President Bola Tinubu is implementing two budgets or that he was biased against the North. My attention was called to this particular forward submission. I will chat it myself, Senator Dab, Senator Karimi, Senator Medoki, and they showed their anger about this particular statement. And they said, listen to the House of Virgin. In the House of Virgin, did you hear me mention a previous name? Did you hear me mention Padin? We discovered some senatorial districts in this particular document some senatorial districts have up to 120 billion. And my senatorial district has just 2 billion. Mr. President, yes. Mr. President, in this budget, in this budget, the year presented to you, I have facts. Constituency by constituency, some 120 billion, some 50 billion, some 30 billion. Mr. President, some have less than 1 billion. Meanwhile, a lawmaker from Ondo South Senatorial District, Jumo Ibrahim, has and asked the, the federal government to charge Senator Ningi to court for criminal misinformation and breach of peace in the National Assembly and the country by extension. A motion is before by law, by instrument of law, by our practice and procedure here. That motion will be concluded by looking to the prayers. What are we, you know, I know I appreciate the fact that you want fair hearing, I agree with that. There should be fair hearing. Senate, distinguished Senator Nigi has also spoken extensively. But the key point is that Adam Senator uh, Yayi has brought a motion before us, and there are prayers there. Let's go into that prayers and let us see which of the prayers we are passing. <laughs> It all began with this controversial interview granted by a lawmaker from Bochi Central 72 hours ago. Senator Abdul Ningi to the BBC Hausa suggesting that 3 trillion naira from the 2024 budget might have been padded. The interview sparked a huge debate during Tuesday's plenary, putting into question the integrity of the lawmakers. The tension was palpable. A motion was then raised on a matter of urgent importance by the chairman of the Senate committee in charge of the budget as he read part of the transcript from the controversial interview. About the review of the budget, this is true. For the past three months, we have engaged consultants to review the budget for us. We have some experts that are working on it line by line. We have seen huge damage that was done not only to the North, but the entire country in that budget. We are surprised to sit, we are supposed to sit with the Senate President to inform him about what we have observed. We want to show him 
what we have seen in the budget that is not acceptable. We, are, we will not accept them, and we don't want the country to continue spending money on those things. Apart from what the National Assembly did on the floor, there was another budget that was done on the ground which we didn't know. We are not in any way intent to undermine either the president, Senate president, or the Senate. We are matured enough. Use your mic and read out what you posted. Apparently, we discovered three trillion was inserted into the budget without location. I am not the originator and I am not the maker of this. Look at the content, look at the English. Is it senators? Is that our quality? We will deal with the issue of the, Senate, of the, of the budget. But we have to also deal with our ethical standard in the Senate. We are going forth and back on these issues and coming up with issues of the budget and individual uh, issues concerning what came to our various constituencies. If we want to go into those issues, all of us are culpable. Some senators here, so-called senior senators, got 500 million each. I am a ranking senator, I didn't get. Did I go to the press? <laughs> Many of the senators, including we the man in the eye of the storm, of jostled to speak. Because if one lack integrity, and we are far to associate with anyone who lack integrity, they say it is bed of the same feathers that flock together. The way to go, in my view, is for both of them to re uh, recount what they have said and to say that and to say that they didn't say so, or if they said so, that they made a mistake of the head, not of the heart, and ask that they be forgiven. We must do the, the right thing. Rather than pandering to our egos and rest of them, I think we should do the right thing by tendering an unreserved, <laughs> unconditional apology to this Senate. I'm also speaking as a Southerner for the first time. The attempt to take the election of the leadership of this Senate beyond June 13, 2023, must stop. Mr. President, sitting as chair, make no mistake about it. A few people who fear they will not give you more than one year to spend in this chair want to do everything possible before the 13th of June to remove you. I am not protesting. If I got anything here, it is not money put in my pocket. They are constituency projects given to my constituency. And I'm not apologetic about it. Mr. President, please let us go into the prayers and do the right thing. My first prayer is that the Senate should suspend Senator Abu Dinigi uh, for, for an initial period of 12 months. Two amendments were made regarding the length of the suspension. The Senate Senator Abdul Nengi of Baji Central, having posted falsehood. Through his interview on BBC Asa Service and other media, B, and is hereby suspended from all activities of the Senate, including being found within the prisons of the Senate for the next three months. Senator Abdul Ningi subsequently takes his temporary leave from the upper chamber. Earlier this week, the House of Representatives discussed a bill to amend the 2022 Electoral Act and advancing it to the second reading stage. Take a look. The House of Representatives within the week considered a bill to amend the 2022 Electoral Act for second reading. Amendment, I say. Sponsored by Honorable James Falike, the bill seeks to ensure that a person seeking transfer of their votes registration data actually resides in the constituency to which they have applied. The person seeking the transfer must show evidence, physical or otherwise, to the resident electoral commissioner of his existence in his new place of abode 
This evidence is by showing the applicant's utility bill, the applicant's name, as well as evidences of his residence by the community leader or the district leader, as the case may be. Right, Honorable Speaker, remember the, the main section five is that the originals of the utility bills and letter of confirmation must be physically shown to the electoral officer by the applicant at the point of taking his or her bi biometrics. It's trying to cure a situation whereby somebody can be somewhere and participate in the process of selecting either a representative or a leader in another constituency simply because he has transferred his or her voting data in that, to that particular constituency. I want us to expunge the utility bill because a utility bill cannot come on the name of a tenant and I'm going to the Resident Electoral Commission to present it that I should be transferred. It means that after you have gotten your utility bill, a community leader who may not like your face will tell you, sorry, I cannot confirm. A community leader can be anybody. How do we define a community leader? We are seeking to increase more Nigerians to participate in the electoral process. If we bring in this con condition, Mr. Speaker, we are going to restrict more people. Honorable Falike was eventually prevailed upon to step the bill down for further consultation. Meanwhile, 24 hours after the suspension of the student loan scheme by the president, both chambers of the National Assembly received a communication from the president on a student loan access to higher education repel and reenactment bill 2024. Both chambers quickly considered and passed the bill through second reading. The House of Representatives has mandated its committees on solid minerals development, commerce, industry and special duties to investigate the arbitrary increase in the price of cement by manufacturers of cement in the country. This follows a motion by Honorable Jonathan Gaza. The House is concerned that the manufacturers of cement have capitalized on exchange volatility to arbitrarily increase the price of the product whose cost of production has not changed significantly since last year. In the meantime, the House is calling for the resumption of the social investment program after it was suspended by the President due to scandals revealed concerning its management. The House is worried that an alleged recommendation suggesting that a new steering committee board under the leadership of the Minister of Finance, she henceforth oversee the social investment programs is not only an anomaly, but contravenes the Eastern law, which situates the implementing agency and programs under the purview of the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation. Meanwhile, following a motion sponsored by 10 lawmakers, the House has mandated its committee on works to investigate the road's current state and identify reasons for the delay in completing the Calabar Itu Airport Akwene Road rehabilitation. Cognizant that the abandonment of crucial infrastructure projects not only undermines the welfare and prosperity of the people, but also reflects the government's inability to meet their citizens' needs. The House resolves to, one, mandate the Committee on Works to investigate the road's current state and identify reasons well, for, the delay, for the delay in completing the Calabar E2. Road the House also notes that Akuna Yiri Kaba Road is a severe disrepair with portals potential for kidnapping and criminal activities, causing frustration among motorists and users. The House is concerned that between 2023 and 2024, many Nigerians have been killed by bandits on this axis. The House is alarmed that on February 9, 2024, a bandit ambushed and shot an 18-seater bus from Lagos to Abuja, killing the driver, abducting all passengers, and leaving a five-year-old girl in shock. Urge the Federal Ministry of Works, 
Federal Road Maintenance Agency to rehabilitate the, four, the four portions of the road. Also, urge the Inspector General of Police to establish a divisional police station in Akuno Akoko, Northeast, Northwest Federal Constituency of Ondo State. Welcome back. You're still watching the gavel. The Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Mr. Yesum Wike, and the Police Commissioner arrived at the Senate Chamber to respond to summons regarding the security situation in the nation's capital. The briefing session was held behind closed doors. Take a look at the report. The Minister of the FCT, Mr. Nyesom Wike, as well as the Police Commissioner, arrived to the Senate Chamber to honor a summons to brief on the security situation in the nation's capital. The session held behind closed doors. Less than three hours later, the FCT Minister and the Police Chief state some of the issues discussed and the plan to improve security in the nation's federal capital territory. Uh, security has quite improved in FCT. And let me also say, there's no part of this world where criminality has been abated. No. You have asked several times in America where people go to schools and shoot students. So let people not have that impression that you cannot have one crime or the other. What we're trying to say, being able to limit or reduce the level of uh, insecurity. But if anybody tells you that as society is concerned, you don't have one form of uh, criminality, that is not correct. And we must have to tell ourselves the simple uh, truth. Also, most of the kidnappings to you here sometimes are segmented by people. The discussion was uh, how FCT had been secured recently. All of them came to acknowledge that FCT is not secured recently, especially like many of them said there, since my assumption of office. They have seen changes, they have seen, and uh, I give it to some of my boys, my colleagues in the other security outfit, because we have been working in synergy to ensure safety. We have taken gun extra miles to ensure safety. Meanwhile, southern senators have met to revive their forum, electing Senator Adito Kumba Biru, representing Lagos East as chairman. The coincidence of reviving the Southern Senators Forum 24 hours after the suspension of the Chairman of the Northern Senators Forum was questioned. The expectation and the responsibility that has been bestowed on us is to champion the cause of Nigerian, Nigeria and Nigerians first and foremost. And of course, again, because we also live in an environment where we also have our Northern brothers as well. So what we are meant to do is to also work closely with them in championing the cause of, Ni of Nigeria. It has always ex existed. What we just have now is a change of leadership. Because our former leader was, I mean, or presently is the leader of the Senate. And of course, we now have a new leadership. And we also will follow in the line of direction that he had given us. So it's a continuity. The upper legislative chamber has commenced investigation into the disbursement and expenditure of the ways and means advance from the Central Bank of Nigeria, obtained under the administration of former President Muhammadu Buhari, as well as the Anka Boros program. The President of the Senate, Senator Gautil Akpabu, inaugurated the ad hoc committee in Abuja and charged the 17-member committee to ensure thorough investigations of the 33 day naira advance. You must leave no stone on terms in the pursuit of the truth. Therefore, conduct our inquiries and dig out information that will assist the Senate in making decision on this matter and also making laws for the betterment of our dear country. The information and data you are going to gather for this investigation are very sensitive and must be handled with the utmost care and discretion until you submit your report, we will not see any aspect of the report in the media. To commit this place. In the House of Representatives, the Committee on Host Communities met with the NUPRC and High Prep on the cleanup exercise in Ogoni River State. This committee is to ensure that both water, the air, and the ready very devastated environment in Ogoni land. And also even beyond, because the one they are on now is a pilot scheme, which by the grace of God, working together, we will have some legislative backing so that they will stop operating you know, under 
a gazette so that there will be a proper legislative uh, backing to these uh, activities they are doing. Senator Francis Fadahusi, who serves as the representative for Oshun East constituency in Oshun State, speaks to us about his primary focus in addressing the needs and concerns of his constituents. Here was the interview. In the last four years, which we have, we have not even finished, just last week, we still did about two or three empowerment, which is, mm -hmm. which uh, no senator is even doing again. But nowadays, it should go beyond it. The power generation is poor now. The distribution is almost at zero. If the situation of power increase, improves, then we want small, small scale industries. We have to go further. Enough of uh, distributing 5,000, 5, which could not bring any development. If the state, like what also is doing now, also is now doing some major roles to connect the farmers, then our own would like to do feeder roads in conjunction with the local government. The local government now is working, at least in Osun. That's my area. My area is also East. That's Ife, it is a senatorial district. Our problem now is the major road, that federal road that passed through, through us to Ikiti, Ondo, and Kwara. So if those major roads could be done by the federal government, then we'll be okay. The remaining roads that we attract the farmers to come from the villages to town, that is our own problem, which is major. So we'll be able to cooperate with the state and federal, because we have been doing it, including bridges. Then we are going seriously to agree this year. Go so kind. The two ministers in agri are all agri part, and they are from Senate. So we have to go to meet, and we have met them to advance our own cause. Because the more we produce food, the more you, the less you see uh, villagers coming to town to disturb their peace. Then, mm -hmm. if there is power, we will now to connect them to do a lot of uh, more of uh, artisan work, which we are trying to do now. We have provided enough uh, transformers, which at least there is no local government that got less than between 5 to 10 out of 11 local government. We are still, we are still doing it. Then the rural electrification is the problem, which is major, which we have to start begging the federal government. And I know under uh, President Tinubu, who is someone from rural area too, we know how to assist us. And by the grace of God, before we finish this, you will see that the economy will improve. Without the economy of the rural area improving, there's nothing the cities can do. That concludes our program for this week. We encourage your feedback. Please email us at thegavel at channelstv.com. Thank you for watching. I am Benny Ark. Be well.